Greetings, 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 royal family. I'm back. All right, second day back to work. You know, the first day was a doozy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday. What's today? April 29th. Happy Thursday, everybody. All right, so I'm up and Adam. Um, thanks to all of those who are joining live via Twitch. Shout out to the royal family over on YouTube. You are getting the pre-recorded version of this morning show. Okay, welcome nonetheless. Make sure you pay your admission fee. Hit that like button. Drop a comment. Say hello. All that good stuff. All right, so it's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. Yesterday was my first day back after taking a little mini vacay. And it was okay. You know, I was a little rusty. But I think I'm getting back into the swing of things. Today we got a couple of hot topics on the lineup. I'm not going to be here, you know, long like I was yesterday. I had a whole lot to talk about. But I really want to talk about um, DJ Khaled. He released his track list for his new album yesterday. And I'm excited. So I'm going to get into that. Um, a couple of, you know, shenanigans in the in the news and things like that. Political social music yada yada but yeah let me know if you guys seen the track list for dj khaled's album if not we're gonna go over it today all right so let's not waste any more time so we always have to start off with what's going on as it pertains to you know um not necessarily pop culture but current events news you know social political yada yada okay so if you guys are not aware um, a judge denied the public release of the body cam footage in the, you know, situation. You know, I can't say certain words, but you see it there on the screen of Andrew Brown Jr. Now, this took place in North Carolina. Here's what I want to say first before I even go into reading the article. The citizens of the county, the city, whatever, the state are paying taxes right um and that money goes toward law enforcement right these body cams i'm assuming i could be totally wrong correct me if i'm wrong uh are being paid for by the citizens of the state county city whatever right i would be outraged if as a taxpayer i was told that the body cam footage is not going to be released to the public. After reading the article, I could kind of, uh, part of me understands why the judge denied the release of the footage and a part of me is outraged at the same time, right? All right, so here goes the, the article. Family lawyers and prosecutors have demanded the release of the video since the incident occurred on April 21st. Now, the body camera footage from officers involved in the situation with Andrew Brown Jr. in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, will not be released to the public. According to the Washington Post, a judge on Wednesday held a court hearing to hear petitions to release the footage and ruled it will not be released to the public, but will be disclosed to Brown's family. So his family is supposed to be seeing this, this footage, but the public, not now. I don't think they're going to release it now. They eventually will. But for now, the judge said no. So Superior Court Judge Jeff Foster ruled against a petition filed by media outlets, including the Post. According to the newspaper, Judge Foster made his decision based on the release of the video potentially affecting a trial and putting deputies involved in danger. Now, I know you're saying, who cares about the safety of these deputies? They didn't take into consideration Mr. Brown's safety, right? And I wholeheartedly agree, if that's your train of thought. Um, but it sounds to me like a whole lot, a whole lot is going on. I think they're trying to make it seem as though they're trying to keep things civil between the public and law enforcement. But to me, it just seems like a bunch of flim flam. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my opinion. Now, on behalf of the media outlets, lawyer Mike Tadich, Tidich, whatever, argued the eyes of the world are upon us, citing the recent Derek Chauvin uh, trial. H.P. Williams, an attorney speaking on behalf of lawyers involved in the situation, had an opposing opinion. Uh, there's a difference between the public wanting to see the body cam and the public needing to see the body cams. This is what Williams said. Um, we don't need 
we don't see a need for the public to see it at this point, right? Now, I don't like the fact that they're making the decision as to what the public needs to to see. You know what I mean? If you're a taxpaying citizen and you live in that city, in that county, uh, regardless if you knew Mr. Brown or not, Andrew Brown, imagine, regardless if you knew him or not, I'm getting tongue-tied, I just feel like, you're doing a disservice to the taxpayers. I feel like I, if I'm paying for something and my money is going toward fortifying law enforcement, right? That's supposed to be able to protect and serve the community. Why are you withholding this information? Again, I get it. I understand, you know, this is kind of heavy for the first topic, but I just want to get this out of the way. Keep you guys abreast of what's going on and also share your opinions. Let me know what you think about this. I mean, this just screams... You know, something is going on, and you guys are trying to obviously hide something. You're probably going to finagle and finesse, do you know what I mean, the footage, right? Like, do we trust y'all? No, no. Why would the judge say, no, don't release the body cam footage? I don't know. I just think that that's, as a taxpaying citizen, no. You can't expect me to pay for services for my community and then withhold those services, part of those services. That's That's my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. So the FBI has opened a civil rights investigation in the situation. Um, a deputy, he says that uh, seven deputies are on leave pending results. Initially, the sheriff's office did not release the footage, citing a state law requiring court approval before doing so. Right. So they had to get, you know, people were petitioning for the footage to be released. A judge had to sign off on the release of the footage judge said no so this is a picture of um mr brown's aunt on andrew brown jr his aunt she's holding up a picture of his um uh, holding up uh, her cell phone with his picture on it <sighs> this is really wild i encourage you guys to read up on it i don't want to go any further because this does get more detailed and it talks about autopsy reports and stuff like that and injuries and the way that they worded this article is really tricky, in my opinion. I see, like, the little, you know, mind tricks. Um, you know, there was a wound to the back of the head. Yeah, I know, right? Like, how did that happen? Um, there's another article saying that Mr. Brown hit one of the officers with his car. So read up on this a little bit further when you guys get the opportunity. You know, if you choose to. I know it's heavy. It's a lot just to keep yourself abreast of what's um, what's going on. Now, in the same vein of this type of crap, remember this lady, Amber Geiger, ex-Dallas officer, who basically, you know, took Botham John up out of here. She said that she walked into the wrong apartment. And, well, she walked into an apartment thinking that it was hers. <laughs> so crazy, right? And she basically, you know, popped... Botham John, he was sitting in his own apartment. Now, here's the thing. I could go on and on and on about this. Um, recently, she had an appeal because her legal Zoom lawyer, I don't know where this guy came from. He probably is not an appeals attorney because I was watching the um, the little court sec section, session, session? Is that the word? Session. And it was about like 30, 35, 40 minutes or so. And her lawyer, Amber Geiger, her lawyer, is trying to get an acquittal for her because she was sentenced to 10 years, right? And she's what? She hasn't even served a year and a half yet, I don't think. No, it's almost a year and a half she served. She filed for an appeal. The hearing was Monday? It was this week. It's whenever the 27th was. And her lawyer is wanting to get her 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 judgment acqu she acquitted like like as if she's innocent, what? And if not acquitted, a lesser uh, charge to reduce her, her sentence. That's the word that I'm trying to look for. So in the article, let me see. Uh, Geiger's appeal hangs on the contention that her mistaking John's apartment for her own was reasonable and therefore so too was the popping. So basically her lawyer is sat there and said, the judge was getting so tired of him <laughs> there were two judges. The female, the lady judge was getting so tired of Amber Geiger's representation. Like, you know, okay, it's justifiable. You know, she thought it was her apartment. She thought Botham John was an intruder. Now, she claims that the door was ajar, and it caused her to panic because she's like, why is my door open? 
you know, there's somebody inside sitting on the couch, eating ice cream, watching TV. But anyway, and that was already proven that she's a liar because there were residents that proved that those doors in the apartment are so heavy and they're designed not to stay cracked open. So if you basically open the door and you let the door go, it will automatically close. It will shut and lock. Right. That's already been proven. So the door being ajar was already proven to be a lie even before the trial started, because I remember when this happened. I've been keeping up with this since day one. And there were neighbors who resided in that apartment community, in that apartment complex that showed news uh, personalities that there's no way that these doors can be ajar because of the way that they're designed. So ballistics already uh, also during the trial, ballistics determined that um, Botham John was not coming toward Amber Geiger, as she said in her statement. She said that he was coming toward her and she was scared. Ballistics already, you know, debunked that. So basically... And the judge is going to determine whether she is going to be acquitted, if she's going to get a lesser sentence, or if her uh, appeal is just totally going to be rejected. But her lawyer was really a goof. You can find it's on YouTube. You can find the the um the little court session and listen to her lawyer ramble on and on and on. I was a little confused. I said he doesn't seem like he's well versed in appeals because he was going all around the world. So he basically says that you know she should get off. Because she thought, you know, no big deal. She thought she was in her apartment. She thought Botham John was an intruder. So she she defended herself, you know, so she should get off. Oh, boy. Imagine being able to be that careless and uh, you're a police officer. You know, police officers are trained, are supposed to be trained in so many different facets, like to, you know, determine if something is dangerous, determine a threat using, I guess, your sixth sense. And to make a careless mistake like that leads you to wonder, was it really a mistake? Drop down in the comments and let me know. Moving along, Black Rob, former bad boy uh, member. You guys are aware that he went home to glory on April 17th. There was footage circulating prior to his passing that he was in the hospital and he was ill. He was in and out of the hospital, we've come to find out, for the past several years. Um, and, you know, he, he went up yonder on April 17th. I'm not being insensitive. There's some words that I cannot say. You know, I'm, I'm back now, so I got to be careful of the algorithm. Twitch family, if you're just joining, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, make sure you guys are following me on Twitch, she underscore Royal B. Also on Instagram, you know, just keeping the socials rotating. Anyway, so... Black Rob, his uh, his memorial service is going to be on April 30th. That is Friday. So this is going to be his homegoing service. And this is going to be televised on Revolt TV. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to be petty. I just, I find it interesting that I went to Revolt's Instagram page and this is nowhere on the page. So I'm like, wow. They couldn't even post it on the Revolt TV Instagram page, but it's going to be broadcasted on Revolt. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But the caption reads, Friday, April 30th, join us as we gather to share our favorite stories and memories, to laugh and to cry in memory of our beloved Robert Black Rob Ross. We will always love you. Watch live stream 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube.com slash Revolt TV. But again, I would, if you go to Revolt's Instagram page, this this is this is not on there. The source is sharing it. Video Music Box is sharing it. Um, yeah, I find it interesting. And it's being reported also, it's being said that Diddy is going to be paying for uh, Black Rob's homegoing service. You know what's crazy? What do you guys think about all of the uh, criticism that Diddy has received because of his shady business practices, I guess. And when people saw that Black Rob was like down and out, you know, they weren't happy with Diddy at all. What do you think about that? I saw, you know, people sharing their opinions. It was kind of 50-50. Uh, some people were saying that, you know, Diddy is not responsible for Black Rob. He's a grown man. Some people were saying like, yeah, he's not responsible, but, you know, he's your former artist. He made you a lot of money. He was down and out. 
Why didn't you look out for him? So drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys think. All right, I'll be tuned in. So um, if you guys are going to be tuned in, I'll be giving my thoughts about the service. R.I.P. Black Rob. Little Kim, the Queen Bee, so you best take heed. This is according to Vulture, the article. I did see that Little Kim is going to be, she's written actually, a memoir. And it's going to be released on November, is it the 2nd? November 2nd is the release date. People have already started pre-ordering copies of the book. Um, I'm happy for Little Kim. I really am. I love Little Kim. I will always love Little Kim. She is a staple in hip hop, not just female hip hop, but she's a staple in hip hop, period. Okay. So this article was written by Vulture, but I did see on her Instagram page that she was promoting her book. Now, this article is very interesting. I read this early this morning. So I thought that this was interesting. So the article goes, Little Kim has written her way back to the throne. No diss tracks necessary. <laughs> The legendary rapper will reclaim her title with a new memoir, The Queen Bee, co-written with Kathy Ian Dolly. That name sounds so familiar. Who is that? Anyway, on November 2nd, so that's when the book was going to be coming out. She says, I'm excited to finally get to tell my story after all this time. This is what Little Kim told People, People Magazine. She goes on, many people have thought that they knew the story of Little Kim, but they have no idea. Now, the Brooklyn native, Little Kim, that is, came up with the notorious B.I.G. as the only woman in the rap collective Junior Mafia. And here, here they go with the foolishness. Not foolishness, but just trying to pick. Because I, I already know people are already going to be up in arms about this. Okay, so she came up with uh, Junior Mafia inspiring a generation of female rappers by selling millions of records. I know that shouldn't be a big thing, but trust me, I can see it now. People are going to take that line and they are going to run with it. They're going to say, oh, they're trying to shade another female, other female rappers, whatever. Little Kim not only blazed trails for women in hip hop, but also inspired the careers of those who followed this is what the press release reads. Oh, boy. However, life at the top hasn't been easy either. Little Kim also talks about the hidden moments of her reign, her complicated high-profile relationships, the misogynistic industry she fought to change through sex positivity, the challenging double standard of self-image and beauty in the spotlight, and the momentous act of loyalty that ultimately landed her in prison. Talk about buzz. The Queen Bee reigns on November 2nd. I'm telling you right now, there are going to be people <laughs> who are going to get their panties in a bunch because of the way that this article was written. I don't disagree with anything, and I don't think that everything is shade. I don't. Who knows? This the person who wrote this article might be biased, but I there's there's no reason for anyone to take this the wrong way in my opinion. But then again, I can't tell anybody how to take anything. I'm telling you, inspiring a generation of female rappers, that's going to trigger somebody. And also um Little Kim not only blazed trails for women in hip hop, but also inspired the careers of those who followed. That's going to trigger some people too. Hold on to your lace front wigs because people are going to be up in arms about it. I just listen. I just sit back and laugh. It's all entertainment to me. So it is what it is. All right. So we are still in the vein of music. Make sure you are liking the video if you are just joining the broadcast. Welcome. This is day two. I'm back from a leave of absence. <laughs> I'm back from my leave of absence. This is day two and it's a whole lot going on. Make sure your notifications are on. I'm going to have to work double hard, triple hard. It's all good though. I got a hustler spirit, period. Okay. So I'm going to have to work, you know, thrice as hard to get back into the algorithm on YouTube. And that's perfectly fine. I'm streaming, streaming live right now on Twitch. So if you have the Twitch app and you always want to you know, you want to check the Twitch page, you want to follow me, you want to get the information or the show first live in real time, make sure you follow me on Twitch and I'm going to be putting this up on YouTube later on. All right. In the vein of music, 
DJ Khaled. He released the track list for his album. He did it yesterday after I already, you know, did my little Hot Topics morning, early afternoon segment. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm excited. This is courtesy of Baller Alert on Instagram. Caption reads, DJ Khaled just dropped the track list for his new album, Khaled Khaled, coming out on Friday. So this is going to be released uh, April 30th on Friday. These features are insane. Now, I just want to give DJ Khaled his flowers. I do. I know he's been accused of being a culture vulture, but I just want to give a little bit of insight. I personally don't feel that DJ Khaled is a culture vulture. Being a Caribbean, you know, an island girl, a lot of us Jamaicans in particular, a lot of us Caribbean people have respect for Khaled because Khaled came up not only, you know, being involved in hip hop heavy, but he's also heavy in the dance hall sound clash scene. Those of you who, you know, my island folks, even if you're American, some of you might know the culture of the sound clash and, and all of that stuff. But DJ Khaled has always showed respect to Jamaican culture, roots, reggae, you know what I'm saying? Uh, dance hall. He's always shown respect to the Jamaican culture and DJ Khaled was very, very young and he was under the tutelage of some of, I guess you can consider them, you know, icons in the dance hall, you know, uh, scene. So when people say that he's a culture vulture, I, I, I get what they mean by that, but I don't consider him such because he has a, like I said, a respect and appreciate and an appreciation for, um, the Jamaican culture, reggae music in particular, even hip hop. He's very talented. He always shows the utmost respect. And I think he's liked. He's liked by a lot of the heavy hitters, you know. These features, like I said, are insane. First of all, I just want to point out the fact that his children are so adorable. The oldest is getting so big, looks just, Assad looks just like his mom, and I think his little son's name is Ahmad, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, first of all, 13 songs. This is an album. This is a true album, in my opinion. There's 13 tracks on the album, not four. This is not an EP, a mixtape, whatever they're calling. This is a whole album. I'm excited. We see Little Baby is on here heavy. Meg The Stallion has a feature. Her, Migos. Little Wayne, Lil Dirk, <laughs> Bryson Tiller, where the heck has he been, right? Um, a Boogie with the Hoodie. Anybody have an update on his um, legal situation in Jersey? <sighs> Man got caught up in Bergen County in New Jersey. Of all the places to get caught up, Berg, just a piece of advice, Bergen County is not one of them places you want to get caught up, if you know what I mean. Anywho, shout out to Jersey. Um, Justin Timberlake, eh, he could have kept that. Meek Mill, her, Bryson Tiller, Drake, of course. Of course he's going to have Drake on here. And the track that I'm most excited about, that I'll probably go to first, is number 13, Where I Come From. See, okay, it's DJ Khaled, Buju, Capleton, Bounty Killer, and Barrington Levy. I'm going to say something right now. Those of you who know, you know. But for those of you who are unaware... Let me just tell you, these are heavy hitters in reggae music, in dance hall reggae, reggae music, right? Heavy hitters, Barrington Levy, legend, Bounty Killer, legend, Capleton, Grand Puba, Buju, Icon, legend. You understand what I mean? You don't get features like this if you're just a yang, yang, yang. He's well respected, and again, he's shown respect to the Jamaican culture. This is why he can get a, a, a Capleton on the track, a Buju on, but Buju and, and Khaled are friends, so they're really close. Barrington Levy, okay? So number 13, I'm going to first straight out the gate. I definitely will be downloading and listening and supporting. Um, he's taking his time with this. I want to, I want to hear, I just want to hear, I'm excited. This is, this is, this is good. You know, this is, this is really good. So shout out to DJ Khaled, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know which um, song 
you're excited to hear. I'm excited to hear. I want to see what Meg Thee Stallion is going to do with um, uh, Post Malone, Meg Thee Stallion, Lil Baby, and Da Baby. I did it. That's track number four, right? Is that four? Yeah. So I'm curious to see what that's going to give. And I think they're sh supposed to be shooting a music video. If I'm not mistaken, I did see on DJ Khaled's page that Meg Thee Stallion came to see him. Um, oh, how could I forget? So Nas and Jay-Z are going to be also on the, um, on the song. I mean, on the song, on DJ Khaled's album. And Nas and Jay-Z are going to be on a song. Now, I'm excited, okay? Um, sorry Not Sorry is the name of the song. So these are some of the, you know, images from the music video that will be debuting all right, like real casino esque type blackjack table type deal. I'm interested in hearing the song. Um, am I over excited? I I don't know. I like Jay Z and Kanye West together. That's what I like. Nas and Jay Z. Yes, yes. I I just I want Jay Z to stay away from my Nasir jones because that's bay right there okay but i understand you gotta collab you gotta do your thing or whatever i'm looking forward to it being a good track i did like jay-z and nas black republicans i know that's like old that was on nas's um hip hop is dead album but i did like them on that uh on that song so i don't know is jay-z gonna be doing too much you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay, you know, they ain't hearing from me for a while and I'm on the track with Nas. So, or is it just going to be some real good vibes, a nice exchange between MCs and good flows? So we shall see. We definitely shall see. So that's going to be dropping on um, April 30th. Um, I want to do like a listening party type deal, but I don't know how that's going to work. Um, I know Twitch is really lenient when it comes to certain things, but then again, maybe not because these are some heavy, heavy hitters. You know, this is like DJ Khaled, Jay-Z, Nas. So I don't know. We shall see. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Sound off. Sound off. All right. Who we got up next? Oh boy. This, this is interesting. This is, <laughs> this is a hot mess. So a New Jersey pastor, you know. New Jersey is very rarely in the news for any foolishness and shenanigans. So a married New Jersey pastor resigns after sending revealing photos of himself in gym tights to another woman. <laughs> I added you to my close friends by accident. This is what the pastor allegedly said. This is according to the neighborhood talk on Instagram. So <laughs> the caption reads, when the Bible said thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is not what it meant. Um, a a Hillsong? Where the heck is Hillsong in New Jersey? A Hillsong pastor has resigned from his position after he was caught sending pictures that showcased some revelations about his private part. Who wrote this article? Yes, that's D. Hilarious. Now, according to Daily Mail, Darnell Barrett, who's 32, he's married. He's a married New Jersey pastor, posted two photos of, on his close friend's Instagram story. He captioned the photos with motivational words, but it's hard to focus on the message when the girth of his peen is peeking through his tights. Oh my God. He then allegedly sent a photo to a former Hillsong volunteer and tried to play it off as a mistake according to the messages. Hey, I think I might've added you to my close friends list by accident. I'm sorry, trying to figure out how the hell to edit it, this is what he wrote. The member who uh, could see past his little nasty scheme said they were horrified that he would go to such extremes to show the outline of his peen peen, to which he replied, I'm sorry. With a question mark, I'm sorry? Anyway, Barrett resigned from his duties as pastor, but claims that he was before this little picture incident. Oh, he said that he was going to resign before anyway, before the little picture incident. He claims he was fired after cheating on his wife. <laughs> oh, M. Jizzle. What do you guys think about this? Like, yeah, these are the messages. Here he writes the church member to tell them 
they're in the close friends group. Child, people always taking screenshots. Now, why would you post this picture and post motiv a motivational caption? Depression and anxiety are get the best of me. This is, I guess, whatever, whatever that is. I ain't reading all that. A child. After giving it some thought, the church member went off. I'm not reading all of that. This is on the neighborhood talk, so you can see what they were saying. I'm not going to lie. I blocked you for a second. <laughs> Why did he resign, though? He claimed that he was going to resign before that. Listen, man, see? Why you get married if you know you're going to do stuff like this? It's just it's, it's simple self-control. Simple self-control. You think he resigned because he was embarrassed, or do you think that there's more that's going to come out about this particular pastor and he resigned to try to, like, you know, get ahead of the situation? <laughs> No pun intended. All right, let's move it along. Enough of the foolishness. Okay. Lord have mercy. Ja Rule and his wife, they're being sued by the IRS for three for a $3 million tax debt, according to reports. Here's what I don't understand. You know what? Not even that I don't understand. Here's what I think. How can you, how can you, how long have you not been paying taxes to accumulate debt with the IRS in the amount of $3 million, right? I'm assuming these people have money of some, to some degree, right? They're entertainers, so they have a little bit of money or whatever, and they can pay somebody to prepare their taxes. Is it the tax preparers or people who are handling, handling their finances just screwing them over? Because you, even if you're an entertainer, right? Even before you became an entertainer, if you worked a regular job, even if you didn't, you know you gotta pay taxes, right? Like whether you're a little business owner or whatever, you have to pay taxes. So how is it that you become an entertainer, you become a rapper, and all of a sudden you forget you got to pay taxes? I don't know. Who knows? You never know with these people. Um, so Ja Rule, he's constantly been in the news over the years for his battles with the IRS for his alleged back taxes. This is according to Glock Topics on Instagram. One report from 2018 even suggested that the rapper hadn't paid a cent in taxes for an entire decade. This is what I'm saying. How do you get away with not paying taxes for a whole decade? At what point do the IRS start knocking on your door? I mean, they send notices. They can find you anywhere. Like, you've just been ignoring the notices or you're just depending on your finance guy, you know what I mean, to take care of it. I'm confused. I would want to know, like, even if I paid somebody to handle my finances, I'd be like, yo, what's up? You, let me see what you're doing with tax. I want to make sure I pay my taxes. I don't know. Or maybe they just don't care. Which one is it? The report breaks down the amount he owes for each year since 2005. The government says that the two, Ja Rule and his wife, owe a total of $3,139,237.76. My God. So this gives like a breakdown of what they owed. For the years, right here. How? Don't, like, t they weren't garnishing his wages? I, I don't understand. I'm pretty sure he had gigs. He had little contracts. Didn't they garnish your wages? Like, wh I, don't, I don't know. I guess it's different for, for entertainers. Ja Rule has not commented on the latest reports about his taxes. He's been busy trying to sell Fire Festival. <laughs> Oh, they shady for this one. Again, this is Glock Topics <laughs> on Instagram. Pay your, ta pay your taxes. They lock Lauren Hill up for not paying her taxes. Wesley Snipes ain't pay his taxes. He went to jail. Like, what's wrong with y'all? Like, what makes you think that you're going to get away with that? All right. Speaking of jail, child, Kodak Black. Apparently, he pled guilty. This is, again, Glock's Topics on Instagram. Um, he pleads guilty in the 2016 case that he had, and he's hit with 18 months probation, counseling, and he has to apologize. Now, I totally forgot all about this, or maybe I just never cared, but this was interesting. So Kodak Black, he appeared in court Wednesday on charges of doing something to a high school student after a concert in Florence in 2016. Okay, Kodak, whose real name is Bill Capri, was sentenced to 10 years, suspended to 18 months probation with the condition that he takes full accountability for what happened and publicly apologizes 
which he did in court. He must also undergo counseling. He pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of first-degree assault and battery. The victim agreed to all conditions of the plea deal, according to the 12th Circuit solicitor, Ed Clements, who said the victim was on screen in his office at the time. The Tunnel Vision star was charged with first-degree criminal misconduct, put it that way, in 2016 after he was accused of attacking a teenage high school student in a hotel room after performing in Florence. According to the Florence County Sheriff's Office, the teenager, who was from Richard Richland, excuse me, reported the crime to her school nurse when this happened when in 2016 but this is is this what he went to jail for recently and came out you know what's crazy man the people who get glorified and 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 put up on pedestals the things that they do is so it's just so disgusting whatever he pleaded guilty so he's gonna be he, he got hit with 18 months probation which is crazy because i'm wondering oh he was i just remembered he was pardoned by trump so I'm saying to myself, he just came out of jail. Isn't he on any sort of probation? No. When he's pardoned, he comes out scot-free. No probation, nothing. He's. Let me tell you, he's. I don't even want to say he's lucky. If he didn't get pardoned and he came out and he was on probation and then he gets hit with this, found guilty of this, he would have been right back in jail. So he did apologize. I ain't even going to bother play it. But he apologized while he was in, um, while he was in court. Eh, yeah, he's not one of my faves. I know people go up for him, but he definitely isn't one of my faves. Mm. Anyway, moving along. What y'all not going to do is y'all need to stop playing with black grandmothers. I thought that this video was hilarious. This was an April Fool's joke, and I guess I saw this, and this is resurfacing again. Um, hopefully this won't be too loud. But what y'all not going to do is play with black grandmothers. So this was the day that this dude found out that... His grandmother really don't care. She cares more about her car. Like to hear it? Here it go. God damn it, you should have seen that. What kind of shit goes on? When you do something, God damn it, you ain't had no business doing it. I'm sorry. Now, oh, fuck no. <laughs> fuck no. You should have never took my car. Never. I'm sorry. Come on, I'm sorry. I was over at the gas pump, Grandma. We was all like that. Everybody, she, I was trying to pump the gas. It don't the matter. You should have never took my car. He tried to shoot at me or something. I don't give a fuck. Come on, so you worried car. about your car and I was finna get killed. Right. You got damn right. Come on, that's stupid. You stupid acting right now. No, that's stupid acting because you shoulda asked me. Like you ready to do something to me? Like you ready to do something? No, yeah, don't fuck no, no, with me no, right now. No, you, 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 Y'all need to leave Granny alone. He basically told his grandmother he was at the gas pump and they was trying, they almost tried to take him up out of here. So he ran up out the gas station. Where do you find a prop like that? Only in the hood. And I love it. So he trying to tell his grandmother, like, I almost went up yonder. She said, I don't care. You shouldn't have asked, you should have asked me for my car. She did not care. <laughs> that was cute though. But Granny, why are you walking around with no shoes on? Granny, put your shoes on. That's a nice car. What is that, a Maxima? Anyway, all right, so let's take a break from some of these heavy topics. And I thought that this was hilarious. This is the baller alert on um, Instagram. So the question of the day was, this was yesterday. The question of the day was, what is the worst, <laughs> what is the worst lie you ever told your parents? Some of these comments were absolutely hilarious. Somebody said, I told my mom that I was going to spend the night at my bestie house, but really spent the night at my boyfriend's house. Uh, that's pretty common, right? I lied that Metro PCS, I, li I lied that Metro P PCS put Ebony porn on the phone when it was me. I'm done. Coming back from college, I ain't gonna be home but a month and I'm moving back out. Oh, saying that when they came home from college, they were only going to be there for a month. That's a lie. Um, somebody said that they lied, that they locked their keys in their car, so they needed the spare. Whole time, my ex stole my car and left it like 45 minutes away from my house, and I had a 
D-R-U-G dealer, take me to go get it. And I had just met that guy the same day. You guys are dangerous. Um, oh, this is not right. This is not right at all. That I'll be right back to pick up kids. You people are terrible. Uh, someone else said, never had to lie. They never believed anything I had to say in the first place. <laughs> well, that's probably because you was not trustworthy. Um, somebody said, I'm not saying a word. My parents both follow this page. Whoever this is, you are smart. Alyssa Alexandria underscore. You are smart. Um, somebody else said that I was at a, I was at the movies when I really went to Mexico. What? How, what, where the hell do you live? Anyway, last one. When I graduated from grad school, I didn't have a place to stay for a month. I told her everything was good. There were some good ones. I should have probably screenshotted the good ones or whatever. But yeah. So drop that in the comments and say, what's the worst lie you ever told your parents? Let me know. You probably like, nah, I'm not putting my business out there. All right, what's up next? Like I said, I am not going to be here long like i was yesterday okay this is what i wanted to get to glock topics again on ig big up yourself glock topics i like your page so a, a lie is much louder than the truth so wade robbins remember him his uh case against michael jackson's estate is thrown out for a second time and i think it's hilarious that he's holding up the peace sign what a clown. Do you guys remember when um, Oprah went and interviewed him and whoever, the other guy, and it caused such an uproar? Everybody was like, Oprah, you are trash. Anyways, let's get the reading. So Wade Robbins' lawsuit against his, quote, mentor, his words, he called Michael Jackson his mentor, um, Michael Jackson's estate has been tossed, a judge ruled in court. This is... Anyway, according to The Hollywood Reporter, a Los Angeles judge has determined that Robeson cannot sue any of Michael Jackson's businesses over allegations of abuse. However, Robeson's attorney has stated that he's already planning on filing for an appeal. Both Wade Robeson and James Safey, Safecux, whatever, cases have been separately thrown out of court again and again. 1993, no charges. 2005, Wade Robeson was so credible and genuine in his 11 rounds of examination that the prosecution had little recourse, except to suggest maybe he was only abused when sleeping, which Wade also shot down. Wade wants us to believe that he was Oscar-worthy by age seven. Let me tell you something. Y'all are some shady uh, writers and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm not going through all of this bottom line. It's not working. So these are some of the court documents. These are some of the, um, the, the case dismissal, the notes from the case being dismissed. This is the Hollywood reporter, their Twitter page, Michael Jackson, the state gets judged to toss Wade Robeson's lawsuit. Um, Somebody, Ty, oh, Taj Jackson, this is what I wanted to get to, posted on uh, Twitter. Careful, your agenda is showing. Let me fix this title for you. Wade Robeson loses in court because, quote, his truth met the facts. Ooh, those Jacksons are spicy. My mentor, Wade Robeson, this is the article that he wrote. I remember he was singing Michael Jackson's praises, saying that he was great. I think he had a book, he has a book out. How did that do? Did it get pulled from the shelves when all this was going on? So, yeah, what do you guys think about this? I know people have mixed reviews. They have mixed feelings about King MJ and all of these allegations. And it's a shame that the man is not here and um, this is still going on. Well, a judge felt, hey, look, this, this doesn't make any sense. So they tossed it out. Mm -mm. Somebody said that man is a devil. Oh my. Someone at, will Oprah be addressing this? That's a good question. Again, the Hollywood reporter is reporting on this, but this is from Glock Topics on Instagram. 
Mm, I thought that was interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, we're still in the vein of music, and we are bringing it home. Not a long show today. Okay, Billboard Awards. I, I think that this is very interesting. Oh, my gosh. Um, <sighs> These are some of the nominations from this year, right? Uh, let's just get straight to it. This is, this is what I want to talk about. Top female rap artists, right? And um, so far, the no- well, the nominations are Cardi, B, Megan Thee Stallion, and Saweetie. How the hell did Saweetie get on this list to be nominated for top female rap artists? I mean, I know how, but I'm just saying. What do you guys think about that? I'm going to tell you something. The state of female hip-hop is all over the place. I I think they don't know what direction they want to go in. I think that the music industry is really playing around um, but it's working for them financially and they're just tossing some of these females around. I mean, sweetie though, sweetie. Is she, I know she raps, but is that considered rap? Like rap rap? Who makes these determinations? I just wanted to point that out. No hate. I'm just saying like, anyway, top hot 100 artists, the baby Drake, Dua Lipa, Pop Smoke and The Weeknd. And The Weeknd might take that because The Weeknd got a couple of songs on the Billboard 100 in the top, at least top 20, right? More than one. Um, Drake, mm, he's a heavy contender too. So is The Baby. Um, so this is going to be interesting. As far, I think this is going to be, yeah, May 23rd is when the uh, Billboard Awards will be airing. I, I still don't know how I feel about Sweetie being in the category with Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion for top female rap artists. What? How long has Sweetie been out? Y'all like Sweetie? Anyway, drop down in the comments and let me know. That's all I got, y'all. I ain't got no more. Like I said, I got some other stuff that I want to get on. Uh, Mendeecees and, and, and Yandy are trending because of what Mendeecees said. I didn't get a chance to record my reaction or my response to Jocelyn Hernandez appearing on the Wendy Williams show. I'm actually going to watch Wendy Williams show now and see what Wendy Williams has to say about the show yesterday. So I'll be coming at y'all later on with my reaction or my response to that, my commentary about that. So make sure you guys have your notifications on YouTube family. Um, I will be back Twitch live family. Thanks for joining me on this beautiful Thursday. I am signing off. And as always, until next time, folks, peace.